This is the Knock and Talk Show, an Elio first responder veteran podcast, sharing some comic relief from the street. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 26th episode of Knock and Talk Show. I, of course, am your host, Patrick Faulkner, and today's guest is uh, Stephanie Brunner, uh, a new friend of mine, a uh, U.S. Marine Corps veteran, am I correct? Yes. Yes, yes, Marine Corps yes. veteran. Absolutely. And um, uh, all-around awesome person, and we are very privileged to have her here on today's episode, today's show, and um, Stephanie my new sister from another mister. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, well, uh, I am definitely excited to have you. And then everybody out here in the knock and talk world um, will be uh, blessed to have you uh, in this uh, as they get to watch this episode. So why don't you just uh, briefly introduce yourself, let us know uh, a little bit about you, and then we'll dive into the fun stuff. You got it. Um, so my maiden name is Stephanie Yost. Um, before, well, when I went into the military, obviously, um, I did a brief small stint in the Marine Corps. Nothing fancy, no glorified admin, you know, <laughs> nothing fun, nothing fun. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I got married young, super young. I was 20. We have five kids, got divorced in 2017. So... Yeah, but I'm from West Virginia, okay. moved to Kentucky, went in the Marines, and here I still am in Jacksonville, North Carolina, 21 years later. <laughs> okay, wow. Um, uh, as far as work goes, yeah. yeah, about that. So I'm 100%, I'm 100% IU through, obviously, the VA. Um, I've got some heart issues and all that good stuff. Um but I do dabble in some things like I like doing home remodeling and repairs and I was doing some landscaping and I went and did my effective teacher training program um, classes so I could be a substitute teacher. Um, other than that, I mean, I just hang out with my kids and do my IW stuff and hang out with the band. That's, that's pretty much my life. <laughs> All right. Uh, and we'll get into IW. A little bit later on, I'll let you get to uh, explain that. But uh, substitute teaching, yeah. Uh, what what ages? Oh, so with substituting, it could be any age. Now, if I wanted to be a teacher assistant, which I have applied for that too, okay. um, that's like kindergarten. I okay. don't I don't want to deal with older kids. Sure, I mean they're I, disrespectful. <laughs> they are. Like I I love. <laughs> Uh, I love my kids, my like my nieces and my nephews. Um, can't stand other people's kids. Like, I mean, that's pretty much true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, as long as you have good discipline, I think everything is better. But a lot, yeah. I think a lot has to do with social media, and yep. it's nowadays you you can't discipline your children like how we would, you know, like, like when we had to pick our own switches. Yeah, 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 or a bottle, or a wooden spoon, or a belt. Or, yes. you, you can't do that anymore, and these kids no. know that, and they teach them that in school. Like discipline, you can't. No, can't. Right. Can't. Yeah. So now, now they know they can be disrespectful. So. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, and that's, so I don't deal with them. I don't. I, uh, I'm school like kids <laughs> that are still learning to talk. You know? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, and and fair enough, because um. Uh, at one point in time in my law enforcement career, I worked at a college and it was a bunch of um, 13th graders. And <laughs> yeah, they, they were awful. <laughs> awful. Dealing with other people's children is not, is not my favorite thing. To do. No. So no, no. All right. So um, West Virginia, what, what part of West Virginia do you hail from? I am from Fairmont. So a lot of people haven't heard of Fairmont, but it's, 
I don't know what, 15 miles south of Morgantown. Okay. Everybody knows Morgantown. So right. if you say Morgantown, you got it. But we're only 32 miles from the PA line. So most of us are Steelers fans and Pirates. Okay. And fans. So, yeah, all okay. around the best. It may not be the best state, but to me, it's the best state. Always. The best always. State. It is and the always. best. It is the best. The drugs are really bad down there, or up, I should say. But uh, up. Kinda, yeah, up that way, like yeah. eight hours north, you know, but it's beautiful. There's so much to do there. And I'm hoping this summer to take the kids to a few of the places and we'll see how this knee works out after I get my MRI and stuff tomorrow. So, well, um, I lived in, in Baltimore. Like oh. last last part of high school and, and my first year of college, all my family's from Birmingham. So oh. when we would like drive back and forth, we'd we'd go through, of course, West Virginia to get back to Maryland. And we would drive over this bridge. It's like the like the nation's highest New River Gorge Bridge. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Take your kids to that if you haven't already, because that's oh they've been oh yeah amazing. okay they oh yeah we've gone across that every time we go I go home that we go across we usually try to stop um, we've seen people bungee jumping off of it nope. they've done nope. car commercials like bungeeing a car off and yes but it's beautiful but you have to go to like, during the fall because that's when it's pretty well yeah because all the fall colors yeah. I mean I, and I'll yeah. give that to West Virginia I mean the the, the landscape you've got the mountains with the with, with all the foil, I mean, it's just it's, it's really cold. nice. Yeah, really, really nice. Did some hiking along the AT up in that direction. So we yeah. did a little bit there in the mountains of, of West Virginia and, and Virginia and, and, and Maryland. So um, what's on my bucket list? Is it? The AT. Oh, the, yes. The whole and thing? Actually, a friend of ours is, I don't know how many miles he's done now, almost a thousand miles so far, maybe. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Okay. So he's still out there, still trucking it. Is he gonna, <laughs> he's going to power through it, like like through. Yeah, Mike? yeah, oh, he's, start, he's going. He's going he start, the whole way. Did he start in Georgia? Or did he start up in? I think it's Vermont, I don't, right? Well, no, he's yeah, he started. He started south. He starts south, so he's working his way yeah, north. He's working his way up. Yeah, okay. he right. shares on Facebook a lot, and it's. I don't. I, I think his cause is for suicide awareness. I believe that's what it is. Okay. Um, but that he's wanted to do this, and you know he's got an amazing girlfriend, wife. Can't remember which one. But he also owns the groom room, so a lot of people watching this okay. will know who Kevin is. But okay, he he's trucking it. Don't know how he's doing it. I, Beautiful yeah, pictures so, of all the bear out there next to him. I'm like, yeah, no, no. Yeah. And know. we always had the the bear whistle. A super loud whistle yeah, yeah, to try yeah. to like shoo them away. Yeah. Uh, so you don't become dinner. Uh, yeah. You can't carry a firearm because it's no. federal. You know, you can't. It's well, the, the only part. Yeah. The only part that's protected that, that I'm aware of is through the Smoky National Park. Everything yeah. else is like private property. It, it's yeah. so that's the only spot that like, you can't take your dog. You can't take a firearm because it's inside of a national park. Yeah. Um, and, and in order to get the the sticker or the bragging rights, you have to do the whole thing within a 12-month calendar year. So you can start oh, okay. and do half and half if you want. Yeah. Uh, but most people that through hike try to do it in one like one swoop. And it's about a nine-month yeah. average to do it. And that's oh, yeah. yeah, and that's hauling. That's like five to six miles a day. Oh yeah, he does more than that. I guarantee okay. he does more than five to six miles a day. Well, once you get depending on weather too. So yeah, yeah. Um, once you get out of North Carolina and you get into Virginia and West Virginia and Pennsylvania, you start climbing stairs. I mean, the the grade is almost like a. Like, I mean, it's really really steep, and it that takes the wind out of it. even the experienced yeah. hikers. Uh, start to slow down as they get into the older part of. Um, but that's, that. that that's been on my bucket list since I, I don't know middle school when my dad started taking me and my brother up to hike. We've done sections of the AT, but not the whole. Oh, thing. how awesome! Yeah, it was it was great. Great. That's so so cool. if if you guys out there, 
uh, the Appalachian Trail on the East Coast goes from uh, Springer Mountain, Georgia, all the way up to almost the Canadian state or country uh, boundary border. Border is what I was looking for. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's a, it's beautiful. Just I can only imagine. Yeah, I, don't I, get caught in the winter yeah. up north. No, I don't. No, 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 no. I can't. West Virginia is bad enough. I can only imagine that, like, New England states are like. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. So if you're, going, yeah, if you're going south, you start up there very, very, very early spring, late winter, so that you can finish down here in, like, the fall. Yeah. And the summer would be horrible. Oh, yeah. It's bad. I would rather be cold than hot. There's only so much clothes you can take off. <laughs> right. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Only so much. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and you're gonna have ticks all over you, and you're gonna be mosquitoes, and you're really he, definitely mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ticks. Bad. 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 <laughs> so, um, Stephanie, what led you to join the Marine Corps? Well, I had initially had signed for the Air Force because my cousin was Air Force. Okay. <laughs> he told me to do it. So I was like, okay. all right. Um, my other cousin, he went, I guess, to basic, I guess, is that what they call Air Force? Stuff? Mm -hmm. But so he was down in Texas and he actually got injured during training and he gave me all of his stuff. He was like, do it. You know, this is, this will be for you. Um, then I was working in the library at school and I saw this guy in dress blues and oh. I didn't really think of the Marine Corps ever. And I was like, damn, he looks so what? So I had to talk to him. And I'm like, do females join the Marine Corps? And he's like, wait, not many. And I was like, like, how many? And he's like, hardly any. And I was like, is it that hard? He's like, the hardest. Like, he was trying anything and everything he could to convince me not to do it. Okay. And I did it. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you... When he's like, you're going to get yelled at and this, that, and the other. And when you come from a household of a lot of abuse, you're kind of used to it. So getting yelled at and then not being able to put their hands on you, it's like, really, come on, come on. And I used to be really active prior to that. Like I did cheerleading most of my life and I was always like, I, I was brought up with all boys. I was the only girl. So you know, football and I did track and I did all that, you know, wrestling and I didn't get to compete with those other than cheerleading because, you know, it girls weren't allowed. Yeah, girls so. can't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to do, you know. So okay. So yeah. So I was like, I want to go in the Marines. Let's see how this is. And then I was like, I got there and I'm like, oh I fucked up. <laughs> I was like, Oh, I don't know if I can handle this, you know, and it was great though. It was great. It was, it was amazing. I'm, I'm still friends with my recruiter and the old staff in CYC and I'm still friends with all my drill instructors. Like, really? And a lot of, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. There was one that, that, that pushed me. She knew I could do it and I was just had my, you know, you know, you have those days and she just wouldn't stop. And then it got to the point where I'm the idiot that's asking during square away time, hey, you know, uh, can I do some rifle PT? Sure. Oh. You know, so she takes me out to the pit and I'm like, might as well. I've got nothing else to do except sit here for an hour and do nothing. Because, right. you know, then, but my uncle was also, you know, my uncle's a Marine. He was, he had gone into the line for the army during the draft and got snagged up by the Marines. So I thought it was kind of neat. You know, here's my uncle who did multiple tours in Vietnam and made it out. And then my grandpa was army and my cousin, my Marine uncle's son, he, you know, obviously air force. And then I was like, screw it, let's do it. And why not now? Some of my kids actually want to go in the Marines. My oldest son, um, he wants to go in the Marines. He'll be 16 on Wednesday. Oh, okay. Um, my 10-year-old, she wants to go in the Marines. And my 13-year-old son wants to go in the Marines. Now, my oldest daughter wanted to, but with her medical issues, they wouldn't even do a waiver. So, mm. But I tried convincing her to go in the Air Force. I was like, be smart. Play smart. Be smart. 
yeah, now it's Space Force. So it's like, <laughs> go fight some Martians or something. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, yep. my, my youngest one, she's like, you know, I tried the whole spiel. Like, I take them hiking and stuff. And we were we stopped for a break. And I'm like, Jazz, like, aren't you going to go in the military? She's like, sitting there, drinking you know, water. Nope. I was like, why not? <laughs> He's like, nope. I'm not gonna die. I was like, uh, your dad's still alive, and all these other uh, people are still alive. And she's like, um, I'm going to college. And I was like, did you know that if you join the military, you could go to college for free? She's like, I'll take the debt. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> you got me, you got me. But she also, they also know, like, between me and him both being at a hundred, they can go to in-state school for free, and okay. so. Honestly, we don't even have to worry about their education. So, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of great. But, like, our oldest is smart. She graduated at 16. She had gone through an MIT course for astrophysics and all this other stuff. Wow. Yeah, I don't, I, she's smart. I don't know. Her dad's stupid. I'm stupid. I <laughs> don't know where she got her smartness from, but she's brilliant. <laughs> And I mean, we're Marines. Come on, <laughs> we're not that smart. <laughs> oh God, I'm crying. But uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, and here she is, stay-at-home girlfriend. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you going to do with your life? You know, you're almost twenty. There's so much out there. Go for it. Do right. something. Not be right. a stay-at-home girlfriend, or assume yeah, hopefully, hopefully, be wife. You know. Kind of hoping, I'm kind of, but I'm like, don't have any kids yet, but I'm like, I don't want to be a grandma, but no, don't have any, you know, uh, I'm too young for that. I just turned 40 two weeks ago, so at least Uh, I made it to 40 without being a grandma, so. Okay, well, uh, happy belated birthday. Thank you. They got all that gray in my hair. I can't see it. can't see it from here. Yeah. (laughs) Zoom in. If I pull it up, it's like, poof, I look like a. I don't even want to know. It. It's bad. It's still, yeah, still can't see it. <laughs> so, what was one of your uh, fondest memories of basic? I know, I know, it's like uh, when, when you went through. Was it twelve weeks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, okay, no, it was thirteen. I take that back because oh, we 13. had. Um, it was thirteen weeks because I mean we had the crucible at the end. Well, it's okay. pretty much. Me. Um, but we had team week. I think they took away team week. I don't know. I don't know what they do now. Um, I don't know. Like, I think I like the gas chamber, like the gas chamber was great because there was this one chick that kept trying to get out. She couldn't dawn and clear properly and she was freaking out. So she tried running out and one of the DIs like just grabbed her and just body slammed her and I was and just held her down. And I thought it was great. <laughs> Like I'm trying to dawn and clear and laugh at the same time and I can feel it burning me and yeah. burning my throat, but I'm having a blast. I thought it was great. <laughs> I was like, Steph, you're a little crazy. But you know. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sergeant. Can I have another? <laughs> I mean if I can go through it again, I would. And then, oh, you know, funny. People what not exposing their foot lockers. That's horrible. Don't, oh. I mean, they, and back then, you know, we had the old camis, we had the old ICB boots and the jungle boots, you know, so you still had to spit shine and do all that fanciness. Yeah. And, you know, somebody didn't close their wall or their foot locker. It's game on because now one of your drill instructors is going to be running through kicking boots and emptying foot lockers all into the middle and throwing things everywhere. And I got, nailed right in my big huge forehead with an icb boot it was not it hurt so bad i fell i fell backwards i mean it hurt it hurt (laughs) oh we got yelled at for everything i still play games with my kids so like two sheets in a blanket they don't want to listen i get tired of it it's two sheets in a blanket blanket. i laugh i think it's funny I've recorded it, and they're uh, like, "I need you, mom." And I was like, "Well, listen to me, and we won't have to play this game." Yeah, and, yeah, play play stupid games, <laughs> win stupid prizes. I mean, yeah, that's how it works. And I have a lot of discipline. Like, yeah. we have a lot of fun, but discipline's first. And I, well, yeah, I not I don't physically discipline my kids because God help us, we can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will, yeah, they I will put them to work. 
like you want to be disrespectful and here's a pair of kitty scissors and you're going to go cut the grass outside until I say stop. I've done it. Let's, so like, let's go, let's go wash the rocks, kids. Let's go wash the rocks. Pretty much. So like with me, they're very well behaved. I don't have to ask twice. If I do, I give them this look or bust out the scissors and they do what they're told. No questions asked. Their dad's a little different. There's like, no discipline mm. and it's nothing but tablets and video games. That, that's it. I keep them outside. We're, we're always outside doing something. Um, try to keep them away from it because I don't know. Social media has a bad influence on kids these days. Yep. And when my 10 year old who's a bean pole is like, I'm getting fat. Look at my fat on my arms and on my stomach. And I'm like, dude, you weigh 60 pounds and you're, you're about to be 10, which will be 10 tomorrow. So it's just like, where where does this come from tiktok tiktok yeah. is it and they see that and like their stepmom puts a shit ton of makeup on them when we go to dinner and it's like why are you putting makeup on my kids they're too young for that and it puts them out there like this is what you have to be to feel beautiful and sure around the house i'll let them do all whatever you know with the makeup and stuff you want to put 10 pounds on great you're not stepping foot out of the house <laughs> but um yeah yeah it gets pretty crazy there's a lot of differences and between like discipline you think being an admin chick you know i'd probably be the laid back one but and him you know he's a retired grunt so there's a lot of differences a lot yeah. of differences and yeah. it's hard with the kids adjusting with the every other week and right. it's like I get phone calls, like she's got an attitude problem. What is her problem? I'm like, I don't know. She's great for me. She listens. She does what she's told. She doesn't talk back. Maybe there needs to be some discipline on the other end. It's not my place. His house is rule. Don't care. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and my, it just my son went through the same thing on the, the other side. I was the one that offered the discipline and yeah. his mother and stepfather did, did not so much, but while you were talking with your hands, because I do the same thing. There, I know. Little... I'm always talking with my hands when I've got my, you know. Yes. My that was gonna, yes. What is this? It's a poppet. <laughs> I don't understand. I could be a millionaire right now if I would have came up with this. It's like bubble wrap, but you can't, you know, you just pop them back out. And it's addicting. It's the dumbest thing in the entire freaking world. Like, who would have thought? <laughs> you know, my kids are like, Mom, I want more poppets. I will go get you a damn big ass thing of some real poppets and you can roll around pop, 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 pop. And it actually makes a better noise. You just can't repop pop it. You just have to go out more bubble wrap. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is addicting because then you get used to it. And, you know, the pineapple is not a good sign, but. <sighs> yeah, tell me about this pineapple. It's not my fault. Okay, It's not your fault. It's my child's fault. She doesn't understand. And being on TikTok, she should understand, I guess, but she doesn't understand. So <laughs> I am not a swinger. I think I'll swing that way. <laughs> so, but it's not my fault. I tried yeah. getting yeah. her, you know, they've got unicorn ones, can't even use that anymore. You know, <laughs> it's like <laughs> unicorns and rainbows is not a good thing. No. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> she picks out air fresheners for my car and plugs them in and they're pineapples. <laughs> and then it's like, well, hell, they're in my car. Might as well flip them upside down. Oh, <laughs> goodness. Questioning things like this. You need to tell me something. <laughs> I'm like, shut up. Jazzy picked them out. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> every fruit or everything out there has meaning now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, some alternative meeting. Ooh, yeah, crazy. Somebody's gonna, gonna question it. Why, They'll be like, do you read that in Urban Dictionary? The hell is Urban Dictionary? I don't know what that is. And then I read it and I'm oh. like, oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you know about this? Right, yes. Depending <laughs> on the age, yeah. Yep. How do you even know? And I'm like, I did not know that's what that meant. And I will never say it again. <laughs> not good. <laughs> I'm old, okay? I don't know that stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh goodness! I, so, uh, 
<laughs> oh. <and> pineapples. <laughs> Attention veteran business owners, do you want an easy way to be certified as a veteran owned business? Do you want a better way to show it off in the same hard charging fashion as our old unit patches? Do you want an easier way to be found and get business write ups, more interviews, social media promotion, and more? Avboa.net has your six. Get access to over 20 hard charging digital badges for web and social media shares that shows you are a certified veteran business. You've earned it. Show it off. Visit avboa.net today and use code KNOCK6, that's K-N-O-C-K-S-I-X. Get your digital badge today. Okay. I did more time as a spouse than I did while in, but I still volunteer. Yeah, she, I still, I don't know if I take still being a spouse a great thing at that time, but yeah. You know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, you were still living the life, right? Just not in, in the camis. Yeah. Yeah. It was miserable. It was so, I tried going back in a few times and. No. no. I lied getting in about being allergic to bees. But listening every five seconds, you can't get away from that guy. I wonder yeah. if he's still out there. He probably is. But yeah, you, you can't get away from that. They wanted to do surgery, and I refuse to let them do surgery. I, You're I, the VA? Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. They, mm -mm, not doing it. Mm -mm. Just like this knee surgery I need, I'm petrified. My ex-husband's knee surgery failed, and I'm just like, nope. Mm. You are not touching my brain, my heart, my back. You're not touching anything. <laughs> like, no, so I uh, I was in the Air Force, and uh, I had all four wisdom teeth taken out oh. separately by four different doctors what? over a four-month period of time. Yeah, so I was I was a guinea pig. For the uh, the Moody Air Force Base uh, dental uh, training program. <laughs> what the hell? In four months, it took yep. four months to take four teeth out. Yep, one a month. Oh my gosh! They could have called Doc McStuffins and helped you out faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Four different four different uh, dentists. Yeah. So did you get any kind of infections or anything from? No. No, nope. I mean it, they went they went fine, um, so ho ho hopefully I I wasn't the the first like they had already perfected the tooth extraction <laughs> process. Um, I, yeah, I didn't have any complications, but I you know I've got friends that um, have had to go to the VA since being out, and yeah. things never go well through a VA doctor ever. Mm -mm. No, no. If they do, I haven't heard of any. I, and not, okay. I mean, I, I suppose the the law of uh, of numbers, whatever that is, um, says that uh, eventually something good's got to come out. Like somebody's going to have a successful surgery or or uh, some kind of uh, treatment program, but I have not heard of it. Yeah, I I do have one good thing to say about the VA here in this crap hole the black hole of the core but i do like my psychiatrist is freaking amazing um oh good okay oh he's he's the best i've had oh my gosh because they doctors go it's like you gotta tell your story twenty thousand times to a different doctor it seems like every couple months you got somebody new it's like read my crap read it before right. i come in here because yep. i'm done explaining it like why do i have to keep telling you over and over constantly read my shit before i come in easy this guy his, his name is dr jenkins is the greatest now i i believe he was a combat medic is what he was saying um and he saw how crappy the va system was and himself you know he had heard the stories right. and he decided to get into psychiatry and that's what he does wow. and he he's incredible he is the absolute best doctor i've ever had and 
I try to tell my friends, hey, you need a good psychiatrist. That's the man. But he does more than, you know, most of the psychiatrists, they'll just, okay, is the, are these pills working? Or, you know, right. that's well, it. They don't, they don't clear. They don't, he is like, he does it all. It's like, he's a friend. It doesn't matter what it is. They will talk to you about it. If you just okay. want to BS about the football game that was just on, like, he will talk to you about that. It, it doesn't matter. Um, he hates the whole pill idea. Um, just like my PCM, my PCM now changed yet again. He's a doc up in Richmond, Virginia. So it's okay. like a tele teleconference thing or okay. tele whatever it's called. Um, which he he's he's like, you know, talking about marijuana and this, and I guess it's legalized up there as far as medical goes. And I'm like, you know, I've done it before. It has helped tremendously. It has helped. I can't even, if I could do it, I would do it. I, I've done it a couple of times and I don't, I don't feel high. I guess I don't feel different. I just feel my anxiety, not okay there. Um, and like my knee pain, my, my pain is gone, but it's a temporary fix, sure. you know, yeah. just like the pills they give you. It's a temporary fix, but at least I know that I'm not going to get addicted like these pills that the VA gets because it's like one pill after another. I think at one time I had like six, seven different bottles and over 30 pills a day, you know, and oh, it, oh. yeah, it was not good. It was horrible. Um, so of course I asked my doc, I'm like, well, technically you're my doctor. You're in Virginia. Medical is legal. Write the script doc. There you go. So can't I go up there? Cause really you're my doctor. You're in Virginia. I just happen to live here. And he's like, no, nah. you have to follow North Carolina laws. I'm like, crap. you know, it is what it is. And he's like, it'll be legalized before you know it. I guess there's a lot of studies that they're doing here with veterans. Um, <clears throat> everything from, I guess, them growing their own. I don't know a lot of stuff about marijuana at all. Like, I, I don't know. Um, but he had said from growing X amount of plants or something to... Um, some of them doing some kind of edibles and then another one was like a pill. So they're, he said <clears throat> different ones are having different effects on different people. Right. Um, some of them are making them crazy and they're delusional or, and I'm, I'm like, well, watching Netflix, I've learned that there's different kinds of them. Like there's some that's made for pain or some that's made for anxiety or, you know, seizures or this. It's like, so what are you giving these people? And I think like, that's a big, I think it's a big problem. I think it's a, it's a whole pharmaceutical BS sometimes. Like I think it can help not cure, but help a lot of people. Yeah. And that's why they don't want to legalize it because pharmaceutical companies are just going to get washed out. Mm -hmm. And There's billions. Yeah. And I, billions. and I know that he was telling me about what is that other thing? What is the other thing people do? shrooms or something i don't know because i've never yes, done shrooms. them yeah um how they're trying to legalize that and mm -hmm. I, that scares me because i don't know if i can do that I so, don't, um, don't know. i'm not i'm not i've never done a single drug in my life other than my va stuff until i smoked that one time and then i felt guilty <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> and then i did an edible and and i was done like i like that that one i didn't know i did i didn't know I was like okay well I'll, cool and I was I was out I just sat there just and I'm sat like, there I, I did I just sat there <laughs> at a bonfire just looking at people and I and I felt heavy and I don't like that feeling like I felt heavy I'm like I have to pee how am I gonna get up so I'm like <laughs> trying to turn and crawl and I had to have a friend like pick me up you know and I'm like how is it, how do people do this and they're like well how much did you take? I'm like, I don't know. It was just one gummy thing. They're like, oh my God. Yeah, you've never done should, this. I was like, no. Yeah, you <laughs> should have just bitten the head off. Apparently, I, yeah, <laughs> like a little finger off of the hand or something. I don't know. I was like, yeah, never again. I'm not doing this ever again. Uh, so do you do you know who um, Sergeant G, the uh, stoned US MC? Have you met Sergeant G? I met Sergeant G. Have you met Sergeant G? I don't think so. Okay. He was a guest on the show. Uh, he lives in Oklahoma. 
and uh, he's a he's a Marine veteran who uh, has the number one Marine Corps podcast called the Still what? USMC. Yeah. Uh, so quick shout out to Sergeant G at the That's USMC. Cool. Uh, I'll put a link down here. Uh, but he uh, is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the medical benefit side of CBD, hemp, marijuana, even shrooms and things like that. Um, so if you folks out there, if, if you're interested in learning more about this, especially yeah. veterans, our, our veteran brothers and sisters that are struggling with uh, both visible and, and invisible wounds, uh, check out Sergeant G, the stoned USMC. The link will be down here. Um, yeah, he's a great guy. I love Sergeant G. He is so awesome. I'm going to now yeah. have to talk to him. Yes, you should. <laughs> and he is very responsive on his Facebook page. So, really? Yes. Good. Yes. That's yep. good. That'll be uh, fun. Yeah, he, yeah he's, got, um, uh, he's got a great podcast as well. And then he's linked with a couple other pretty good podcasts that he's uh like co-hosts to and, and helps with so uh check out check out that um awesome. what was that. what was the worst thing you remember about basic i don't i will tell you what was horrible oh, tell me oh tell us so it was range week okay and of course we're out there with the males because uh, it was fourth battalion. The second battalion was, you know, training out there with us. And it really sucked because with second battalion, it was like five guys that I was in high school with. Cause we like kind of all went together and oh, okay. yeah. So it was really bad that, you know, we're out there doing, um, doing drill and a sand flea got in my eye and you, you're not allowed to move. You can't. You blink your eyes, you get in trouble, you know? You, you didn't get told to blink, so you, yeah. So I'm over here, like, blinking, 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 my eyes watering, and I, I can't, you know? I've got I've got my rifle up, and, like, it was hell. It was hell. So then she sees and starts yelling at me. So then she tells me I have to run all the way down to join a second battalion. So then I had to go join all those guys down there. And I knew the drill instructor one of their drill instructors, his name was Staff Sergeant Hampshire or Sergeant Hampshire. I can't remember because he got promoted during boot camp. Okay. But I already knew him because he was at our pool functions, our pool E functions in Kentucky. Okay. So he used to pick on me all the time. So then he would yell at me and he would make me go back. I had to do that like eight or nine times. It was horrible. It was awful. It was so awful. But at the range, though, at the range, like, we're down in the pits, and he comes walking by, and he slips me a package of Oreos, and I'm like, oh. he's like, you tell anybody, I'll kill you. It, it, like, yeah, didn't happen. We are at the range. <laughs> so I volunteered myself to go and make targets. <laughs> so while we were there, like, we all went to the bathroom together, and I'm, like, sharing my Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah. Instant cool kid. Great. <laughs> well, <laughs> then, you know, we accidentally got second battalion bag nasties, and oh my god, they had some great food in there, and we got caught. You know. Oh. Yeah, got caught, and then another time, it was during Crucible, um, which are a little, they're a lot more lenient during the Crucible. I mean, that's fifty-four hours of like no sleep and. You know, oh, you got to rest awesome. and out. Yeah, like one and a half MREs, and you're screwed if you run out. And that happened to quite a few people because they're stupid. But, um, <laughs> like during one of the, like the pupil stick fights, um, the instructor, the pupil stick instructor, is like, okay, here's the deal: whoever has the best pupil stick fight wins a Snickers or a Mountain Dew. And you know, we were like, oh my god, that sounds so good right now. <laughs> It is dead summer because I'm an idiot and, you know, this was in, the crucible was in what, August. Oh. So it's horrible. It's horrible. Oh, Paris Island? Yes. Oh. I went, I left a couple days after, I wasn't supposed to leave until October of 01. Um, I had a really bad falling out on my graduation day with my stepmom and my then boyfriend. And I asked my recruiter, when can I leave? And he said, I'll check. And I left that something. So. Oh, I did not okay. know what South Carolina was like. Mm -hmm. 
Bless your it heart. Was, it was awful. It was awful. But I did win the pupil stick fight. Oh, okay. So I, I got my Snickers. I was a team leader. Well, a squad leader. But I didn't eat any of my Snickers. I gave it to everybody else. <laughs> Wow, so I didn't get any of it. So on Recruit Libo, I was thrown a bag of mini Snickers and said, you have four hours to eat it. They better be gone. That was my drill instructor did that to me. Like four hours to eat it. You better get them gone. I think I had two and I thought I was going to die. I was going to throw up <laughs> because I wasn't used to all that, you know, sugar and yeah. chocolate. Yep. And I just, I gave them out. I'm telling people, hey, take them, take them. I don't want them. And then the rest I threw away. I'm like, I can't. I can't do it, but I had to show her the empty bag. Okay. So, but I don't really have any really horrible stories though, because like I said, from from the childhood and the growing up that I dealt with, boot camp was kind of a breeze. So I thought it was fun. If I could go back just to go, you know, I, I would have a blast because I don't know. I just Yeah, if you if you knew now, what well, if you knew then fun. what you knew now, it'd be so much easier. Oh yeah. And now, now it's shitty there. It's bad. Um, when I was married, we took the kids down there and one of the female DIs is like, they have the recruits have more pool over us and they, there's so much leniency now. Wow. So That's much awesome. leniency. Yeah. I have a couple of DI friends and yeah, it's, it's not the same. There's, they can't, they can't push them like they used to, like as far as like adrenaline and, and PT, apparently they can't do all of that anymore. And if one of them, somebody's tired, you have to let them sit down. Like we, we didn't have that. It's like you get up because you're about to get roasted and you're going to go to the pit because now you want to be lazy. So right. we'll show you lazy. And <clears throat> yeah. yeah, no, we, we, we didn't get that. No. So I think, I think the Marine Corps is a whole lot different. I see all these kids all the time. And they are not the same. Like even even the the like attire is different. You know, back when we were there, you know, it's like you had to have closed toed shoes at all times. You couldn't wear flip flops. You couldn't wear um <clears throat> one of those stupid things, Crocs. You couldn't wear Crocs. Right, you yeah, know, yeah. you had to have a belt on. You couldn't have holes in your pants. You know, collared shirt or t shirt, but it had to be presentable. You you know all those. No spaghetti straps. No this. Now. There's nothing. There's right. nothing. You can yeah. do whatever you want. And much. it takes away from it. And it, it takes away. <clears throat> like, I don't know how other branches were, but I know with the Marine Corps, it was very high standards. And now it's nothing. It's, right. it, it, there's no standard, it seems like, anymore. Even though the Marine Corps order, it's, it's still in Marine Corps order, but nobody follows it and nobody cares. So... I mean, back in our day, you know, we would have gotten charged for it. You know, you you would have had a counseling sheet. Right. Yeah. So my, so. my son <laughs> just graduated Army AIT. And uh, he's telling me stories to compare to like my Air Force basic training in the 90s. And I had it worse than he did this past year. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so like the, the, the current Army recruit training basic and AIT is a cakewalk compared to the air force basic training from the nineties. Aren't they allowed to have cell phones now and stuff like all that? All the time. Here? Yes. Yeah, I see TikTok videos with kids in, in basic and, and I get AIT. Like, I mean, you got your cell phone, like yeah. you get to go outside and play basketball. Like what the yeah. hell is that? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, we, we couldn't, we couldn't communicate outside uh, for the first two weeks of basic training. And then we got a 15 minute phone call from a pay phone at the barracks that we had to stand in line for in order to make that. And by the time, you know, you got through, you didn't get 15 minutes. You got maybe seven, eight minutes uh, to get your highs. I love you's goodbyes done. And uh, my son had his cell phone with him. He called us every Sunday. What? I, I think he had, I think he had 30 minutes that he could have his cell phone with him every Sunday. And we would get about a seven minute phone call, my, my wife and I from him. Um, yeah. And he had to move on to like the next person down, down the line. But I, I couldn't imagine having, I mean, one cell phones weren't really a thing back in the, yeah. in the nineties, like not everybody had them, but 
when he was in AIT, he'd call me all the time, Tuesday after dinner uh, or after chow. <laughs> and yeah, Saturday morning after he'd go and do his run, uh, we'd have video chats all the time. I mean, it was great for me as a father being right? able to, you know, to talk to him and stuff. But um, oh, and get this. Uh -oh. My son went through basic training and uh, Christmas was in like the last two weeks of his basic training. They cut it off. They sent him home. What? Yeah. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. The, the, the original plan was to send them home for two weeks and then bring them back to finish the last two weeks. And I'm like, well, that's a horrible that idea. That? <laughs> yeah, that's a horrible idea. I mean, good for me as a father and a, you know, and a parent to be yeah. able to have my son back for a couple weeks during Christmas. But as a as a military veteran and and uh, a law enforcement veteran and training, that kind of training you lose uh, when you send them back home for two weeks. And how many people are going to come back out outside of regs? Who's going to get arrested for DUI? Uh, yep. You know, all that kind of stuff. Bad idea. So somebody somewhere in the army said, you know what, maybe that is about it. We'll just we'll just send them home two weeks early. Yep. You guys finish two two weeks early. Yeah. Man. <laughs> what I kind of imagine. I couldn't like imagine. when we got to Paris Island, we got we had to stand in line. We had like all you had a script to read. That is all you were allowed to say. That's it. Yes. That's that's it. That's all you could yes. say. I forgot that. And, yes. Yeah. And then it's like boom, hang up. You're done. You you don't get any phone calls anymore but the i think it was the series commander i think it was a series commander um it might have been battalion commander had said whoever won the first drill competition they all can get a one minute phone call home now one minute you know hey that's calling home for a second yeah. so we won and so we got that one minute but you had to use the duty hut phone and you had to have a calling card calling cards yes, yes. So my grandma had sent me a whole bunch of them and i had told her before i'm not gonna be able to call home you know but i just started handing them out to everybody like use it use it so everybody was like using my minutes and that's kind yes, of great and it's awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah it was kind of great <laughs> oh the children now have no idea the struggles of calling yeah. cards <laughs> it was and then they don't know they don't like Okay, well, if both of us have, um, who was it? We had T-Mobile, but it wasn't T-Mobile. It was something else at first. Sprint. It wasn't Sprint first, though. It was, it was Suncom. It was Suncom. That's what it was. Okay. So we had, like, Suncom, but if it, you would call somebody from Suncom to Suncom, then it wouldn't use your minutes. But any other person's phone you call, you know, it use up whatever minutes it was, or mm -hmm. you get free calling after 9 p.m., you know? After like, 9, it, yes. It has no, and then your cell phone bill. My bill from 9-11 was the most astronomical bill I had ever seen in my time. I'm talking thousands of dollars because I was at Geiger. I just got there. I got there September 7th. I think it was September. Yeah, September 7th, 01, I, I got to Geiger. Wow. Then September 11th happened, but we were already waiting for pickup or training anyways. So we were just hanging out and not everybody had cell phones. There was only a handful of us. And then 9-11 happened, you know, of course you're constantly, constantly trying to call, call, call. Yeah. Um, can't get through half the time. I had friends whose family were on flights or worked at the World Trade Center and, and they're freaking out. So it's like you give them your phone, like you use it. I don't have family that's flying today and I, that I knew of. And I, I don't know anybody in the World Trade Center or anywhere in New York or the Pentagon or I didn't, you know, my cousin was the closest one. He was over at NSA. So that was the closest to everything that had happened. But my bill was ridiculous. I begged and pleaded. Can you please, you know, this is this, the time that this happened. Can you please take these charges off? It, yeah. They, they refused to do it. They, and then I got rid of them and they went on my credit and I did not care. I could no. not pay that. No. Thousands upon thousands of dollars. It's like, come on. And I just, I was, I don't know. Shit. Don't go on my credit. I don't care. I don't care. It dropped my perfect credit down to a 311. So, Oof. Yeah, that mm. bill, like, whoo. But guess what? But they couldn't take your birthday away. Nope. Nope. <laughs>
Yeah, nine. Yeah, nine eleven was a crazy day. Period. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was um, uh, already uh, out of the Air Force and working at uh, at the police department and been out of the academy a year and a half or so and i was in uh law enforcement survival spanish class training class that week oh, cool. and uh it was crazy times like we instantly went on 12 hour shifts cuz i'm in metro atlanta and so we my county gwinnett county uh had security of the lower part of um, Lake Lanier, which feeds the Chattahoochee, which feeds most of Metro Atlanta's water supply, as well as some of Alabama's water supply. Yeah. So we went in, we went into twelve hour shifts, and I had class from eight to five, and then I'd go work a shift from six p.m. to six a.m. and then shower, crash, go back to class from eight to five, then go and work for the rest of that week. And into the next week, it was crazy. I can yeah. only imagine. That's wild. Yeah, it was. And you um, know, they don't teach the kids any of this at all. Mm. It seems like, like in schools and stuff. Like I don't, I don't know why. But I, you know, I have my kids watch it. I do. They're like, Mom, like, why did this happen? Did the government really do it? <laughs> you know, like. There's so it remains to be seen. Here. You I know think. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. watch it. This is this is what happened, and you know, and they're like, "You were alive when that happened." I'm like, "Thanks." I'm like, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks. Appreci I know I'm old. I get that, but mom, but look at the color of the TV. Like, the, it doesn't <laughs> doesn't look like it's very good. <laughs> and I'm like, "No, we didn't have 4K HD." Uh, you know, no, no, <laughs> no. We you want to know what an eight track TV. is, kid? <laughs> oh my gosh like back home um we like it was like my brother and his son and my my cousins and their kids and my kids it was great but we busted the atari out for everybody like oh, for the awesome. kids like, they hated it why they're, they're playing pong why oh. is a rectangle hitting a triangle or a square over a long rectangular line this is the dumbest game ever <laughs> and you bust out like asteroid or pitfall, and they're like, "This is dumb." <laughs> yes, don't hate. Yeah, don't hate. Yeah. That's what we had. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then my brother goes and gets out the regular Nintendo. You know, it's like, all right, we're uh, stepping it up. Yep. Getting up a notch. <laughs> Get out the power pack and all that, and start running. And oh gosh, it was. My kids are like, "This is dumb." I don't know how. And here they are playing crap like Minecraft and Roblox yep. or whatever it's called and Fortnite. That's nothing but a bunch of freaking squares. What the hell are you talking about? Our graphics were better than that. At least get more than yep. squares. Yeah, Tetris. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tetris is the greatest. Yep. I got our youngest hooked on Tetris on, on my phone, but it's still oh. it's still Tetris. They're like, this is what you play. Yep, yeah, it's a dick. Yep. No, it's not. Yep. And then she's sitting there. Yep. On the yes. Game Boy in black and white, because there wasn't color yet. Yes. 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 The Game Boy. Yeah. Yeah. So great. When I deployed um, twice, uh, once to Jordan and once to Bahrain, I had my, my Game Boy with me. <laughs> and that was, that's what I did on my off time. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there would be nothing else. Now, now you got your PS eight thousands out there, right. and yeah. whatever that Nintendo Switch and all that. My hell, you just need a cell phone. That's all you gotta have. Cell phone. What? Yeah, yeah. I got yeah, everything. There's, there's, yeah, there's plenty of games <laughs> for that. Yeah. So, uh, Stephanie, what's what's next for for you? Like, what are you? What's on the horizon? I don't know. You know That's you know? sad that I don't know. Yeah. That I no. don't, I don't know. No, no <laughs> um, I, I think that would be free. Know, student teaching. I, I just, I can't wait to do that. I can't. Okay. I thought about Ubering it up, but then I don't want to put all those miles on my car at the same right. time. Yeah. But I know I'm going to make ridiculous money because up on main side, like from Courthouse Bay to main side Camp Lejeune, there, you know, it's like $40, $50 Uber ride and it's a 10 minute drive. Yeah. So, so my, my why son was. Why do you want to do that? <laughs> like, yeah seriously so 
when my son graduated a AIT on base, uh, Fort Gordon in Augusta, there was one taxi cab on base. That's it. And that's it. And they, they were still in COVID protocols until like the last two weeks of my son's AIT. They were not allowed off base at all, except for the last two weeks when they finally lifted that. So there's this one taxi cab to try to get thousands of trainees off base for their one day of leave. And it could, it, my son was told it'd be nine hours before the taxi cab came to get them. And so Uber had a sudden flux of uh, customers just instantaneously, like oh, a yeah. light switch, uh, thousands of people trying to get off and then back on the base. Um, I, I think I saw there was recruits, I mean, not recruits, but there was um, ads trying to get Uber drivers from Atlanta or from, from Macon or from Savannah to come up to try to help. Serious? Yeah. There was that, that such a huge need. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that could be a very good, I mean, lucrative sidekick. Jit, it could sidekick. be. However, yeah. this However. crap hole that I live in, um, <laughs> everybody seems to Uber, Lyft, mm. uh, Grubhub, um, every woman, every, every de dependent wife. They're all photographers, you know? Uh, yeah, and okay. And there's, like, nothing left. There's not, there used to be some LuLaRoe stuff that everybody had to do. Um, there's I never like, understood that. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. But it's kind of like, <laughs> oh, you think you got something good going. Next thing you know, poof, there's a flop. Yeah, yeah. And it sucks. And then everybody thinks they're professional at this, professional at that, professional at that. Like, whatever. You just do your job. If you do a great, great. Like, yeah. it's wonderful. I mean, honestly, <clears throat> sometimes I think the education, like, as far as, like, college and stuff, I think it'd be a joke. You know, you got to pay all this money to get a degree on something that you can go to the library, if you can still go to the library, but, or you can buy books and learn all this from home and be just as good, if not better, yep. than spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a stupid piece of paper. A piece of paper that says, "Hey, I can I can go to school <laughs> drunk and still pass the test." Right, yes. right. Yeah. It's like, what is going on here? That's what I mean. It doesn't bother me if my kids go to school. Like they go to college, great. If they don't, they just like I trade. It's got to be a trade school. That's what I tell them. Trade school. If you don't go to college, go to a trade school. That that's never going out. It's never. No. no. You're always gonna have it, and it's kind of like I grew up. What, you know, my dad and my grandpa and my uncle all did, you know, trades. And it was kind of cool helping my uncle, you know, make countertops. Had to help him cut everything out and then do the, you know, the laminate and like ceiling and all that, you know. And then my dad with the roofing and the sheetrock and the painting. So I got to do that. And then my grandpa fixing things and stuff with his car. And so it was kind of cool because I, I've done the whole home remodeling and repairs yeah. and I, I can fix things like my girlfriend, the, um, one of, her husband, Mike's the one that died last year on this day last year, but she was like, girl, my sink isn't working right. It's like leaking and my refrigerator is this and my cabinets this, and I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I've got holes in my walls. I don't, I don't even know how to use a hammer correctly. And so I'm like, Oh my God. And it's like, I, you're going to stand here because I want to teach you how to do it, you know? Yeah. And, you know, she learned how to do siding. I helped her with the, you know, do siding and windows. And, you know, it's really not hard. It's common sense. I mean, it'll take you a couple of tries. But yeah. She's like, how do I read a tape measure? I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, goodness. There's, there's something You are YouTube. really from Boston. You, you don't know, like. Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. This stuff needs to be taught in school. Basics. Yeah. Life yes. basics. Yes. I agree. When we were in school, we had life, yeah. you know, classes. You know what I'm saying? Like shop class. Yeah. Uh, e even home ec. Yeah. Like, I, I took a version of home ec. It was called uh, living on your own. So we learned oh, baking, cool. basic sewing, uh, yep. how to balance a checkbook, yep. uh, typing, like 
all that was thrown into this one class called living on your own. And it was kind of like a whole heck. Yeah. Yeah. How to read recipes and, and like follow them. Um, Yeah. They need it. They need it back. They do. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I agree. They definitely do. Like, how do I change a tire? What? How do you not? Like literally my daughter, the way she totaled my car is she got a flat tire stopped because I had an app on my phone. Um, it was sprint drive. So I could see the location at all times. I could set boundaries. I could, there's all kinds of things I could do, you know? Mm-hmm. And she, she, uh, she was at her boyfriend's house, like I don't know, 25 minutes away. And here she had stopped because she knew something wasn't right. And she stopped for like five minutes and then she got back on the road. She didn't tell me anything was wrong with the car at all. Nothing. I walked outside and there's just a rim with remnants of tire. And I'm like, what, 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 what the hell happened? And she's already left for work, you know? And I'm like, what is wrong with my car? She tried, of course, lying about it. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I drove you know? fine. You know, and uh, my girls were, they were in summer school. And that was the day they had to go get a COVID test done, you know, so they could go back. And I'm like, your sisters have a doctor's appointment. I can't even get them to their doctor's appointment. Like I was stressing, I was stressing so bad. And then she, I'm like, you know what? I was like, don't even come home. If you come home, I'm going to punch you in your face. I'm, I'm not even playing. I will hit you. I will knock you out. You know, she was 18. I will knock you out. And then she finally fessed up and she told me what happened. And I went back and looked at my app and I'm like, you literally stopped. You probably got out of the car and checked the tire. And you drove all the way home. And now everything is broken. Like, I don't know how you didn't die. Like, I, she, gosh. you can see the, the lines from the rim. She was riding on a rim. Oh, gosh. I'm like, mm. the gas tank is literally right over there. And it could have blown up. You could have died. You could have hurt somebody else. And that's like all the way down the street. Like, I followed it. And it was all the way from where she had stopped. I'm like, Holy cow. you should have pulled over. And even if I couldn't make it out there, I mean, you've got the whole thing with the insurance and I got your play too. Side assistance. Like, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then, yeah. yeah. So then they totaled it out. And then the next day my buddy dies. And then it was like, this is shit, man. Can't handle this. And, you know, Matt and Jessica Reeves, because I couldn't. Financially, I was still waiting on that check and I couldn't afford a vehicle. And I'm like, I have to have something. And they gave me their explore for the longest time until, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. Anytime they're like, you need it, take it, you know, and it was great. I mean, it was great. I appreciated it. And finally got my new to me car. So <laughs> and I'm like, my daughter, I told my daughter, you're not touching my car. We'll I don't touch care. It. You're not nope. touching my car. You're not driving. Nope. 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 Privileges nope. revoked. And she had gotten in trouble. Well, her privileges are revoked anyway because she decided to drive while high. So, oh. but I know oh. a lot of the judges here and they know how big into uh, veteran support that I am and like volunteering and, and, you know, stuff like that. So she got blessed to have a judge that her community service was at the VFW. Oh, okay. Oh. I don't see how. Okay. That's a wise place of alcohol. Yeah. When you get in trouble for weed yeah. and you're around a bunch of yeah. Yeah, but it could be worse. I'm like, okay, you know, it could be worse. I told her it attorney, I'm like, it could be worse. Like yeah. it, she could have been drinking and driving. Mm-hmm. I was like, and he's like, Well, she shouldn't have complied, you know, like she shouldn't have been she shouldn't have said yes to doing the blood test. She shouldn't have said yes to do this. And I was like, not for nothing, but I tell my children. You get pulled over, you comply. It doesn't matter. You do what they tell you to do. You go to court and you fight it. Hence the reason why there's a court system. You right. got proven evidence, that's where you go. You don't do it while you're sitting there. Why do you think people get tased all the time and, and everything goes wrong for them? You comply. You don't agree. That's why you have court. Yep. Argue there. Yeah. So her attorney's like, it's good logic, but it's not good logic. And I was like, you just want money. <laughs> you know? Yep. I'm like, yep. Bingo. <laughs> Well, speaking of veteran support, I know there's uh, a couple of things that you wanted to plug um, yeah. here on the show. So tell us about those. 
Okay, so Irreverent Warriors. Um, it came about, I believe it's 2015. Oh gosh, Johnny's gonna kill me. Um, I believe it's 2015. My first hike was in 2017, but um, it is a nonprofit organization. Um, they're we're there to use humor and camaraderie to help prevent veteran suicide. Um, so what we do is we do silky hikes. Everybody freaking loves silkies, you know, the ranger panties or whatever they call them, but now they have cool ones. So, I mean, you just go with like the thigh huggers or well, thigh huggers, they have all the cool ones. Um, okay. <laughs> God, they, they thigh huggers, they have cool ones. Um, but you wear silkies. We do hikes, uh, during hike season. Um, Usually it can range anywhere from six mile hikes to 12 mile hikes and there's stops like every mile, you know, you're always hydrated. You're always, but everybody's having a good time. There's no, there for once you're I'm not saying your family is put to the side, but they are in a sense because now you're just around your veterans family. You're, it doesn't matter what you've been through, if whether you've been deployed or not deployed, or if you only made it through boot camp or basic and or you retired. It doesn't matter. There, there's no hate. There's, it, I don't know. It is just like an incredible organization. Um, now they have them all around the world now. So like this year, they ended up having them in Normandy, which sucked because it was the same day as our um, Wilmington hike. I really wanted to go to Norman Beach because that would have been epic. But that would have been awesome. <laughs> right. But they yeah. have them everywhere. And um the best way to find um information, obviously, Facebook. Uh you go on a Reverend Warriors. Um each hike has its own Facebook page. Um, like our Reverend Warriors Wilmington, there's Lexington, Kentucky, which is a new one. Columbia, South Carolina is a new one, which is great. Can't wait for that one either. Um, I lived in Lexington, that's where I was recruited out of and I left from and my brother still lives there. So really want to go to that. That one's at the end of July. Um, there's one in West Virginia this year. So that's awesome. Wow, okay. Is it going to go over the bridge? It, no, no, this one's oh. in Harper's Ferry. Harper's so Ferry? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. still very pretty. Yeah. It's still yeah. very pretty. Yes. Yeah, still beautiful. Um, but yeah, like, and, and not only do we get together like on Fridays before the hikes, usually there's a themed get together. Um, this weekend, it is Greensboro, North Carolina here. It's a toga party on Friday. It's a meet and greet. Toga, toga. <laughs> you know, right? It's kind of exciting. Um, then Saturday is hike day, you know, and it's fun and it's relaxing. And it's set at a slow pace for everybody. And um, then usually, you know, everybody eats after or, you know, if you want to drink, drink after the hike. Um we try not to encourage drinking during the hikes because you want to remember these times. And there's so many people that it's mainly the younger ones um, because it's for all active uh, veterans and reserves. So a lot of the younger ones are like, Oh, this is a time to get shit faced. And this is, but it's not, it, that, that's not what this is. And um, some of them don't remember their hike. They fall out, they pass out. Nobody wants a silver bullet. Why would you want that? Um, cool. I'll be great. If you want to have a beer prior, usually that's what I do. I have my one Bud Light and my banana. That, that's tradition for me. Um, okay. <laughs> except Wilmington, I can't drink because I'm a coordinator. So I got to uh, wait till afterwards. After. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, a lot of them, yeah. Like we, we try to do sobriety the best that we can. Um, there's a lot, a lot of, um, service members that are with IW that have now become sober or are just starting it. And we don't want to like push that on them. Like you have to drink, you have to do this because that's not what it's about, you know? Right. It, right. So if, if we could get alcohol completely banned from a hike, it would be the greatest thing, but it's going to be hard. They're going to be putting yeah. them in, you know, in their, Oh gosh, camelbacks. They're going to mm -hmm. put it anywhere, you know? So you can't really like get rid of it. Um, yeah, IW is like one of the best organizations out there. Um, Grunt Style is our like biggest sponsor, and everybody knows Grunt Style. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, everybody knows Grunt Style. So, like Dan and Sarah and all of them, they're awesome. Um, what is it like? Twenty Two Sierra Coffee. 
is another one of our sponsors. They're oh, okay. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like anybody that wants to know anything, um, about irreverent warriors, just go on irreverentwarriors.com or go on Facebook. There's, uh, I believe Instagram. I think there's a whole bunch of groups on there. Okay. Um, TikTok. There's a TikTok. Um, it's called IW National on TikTok. And okay. Kyle Page is the one that does all the social media for that and does an amazing job. So it's just a great way just to relax during hike season. You And if you can't afford to travel to these hikes, like gas is ridiculous and yeah. flights are expensive and food and lodging, there's always going to be somebody that's willing to help. Whether they're traveling on their way, they can grab you, they can snag you up. Um, if you don't have a place to crash, somebody's going to have something for you. You don't, you don't have to pay, you know, um, like the tickets to the events and to the hikes are all on Eventbrite. You don't have to pay for anything. You you can do the $5 donation, but you don't have to. And a okay. lot of people are like, I can't afford. Well, guess what? There's no reason, no excuse. So. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And then there was. A local company you wanted to plug? Yes, uh, there's a local company. Um, they're also part of a Reverend Warriors. Uh, Matt Reeves and her, her, his wife Jessica, who happens to be my best friend. Um, they are local beekeepers here. They live down the road in Maysville. Um, but not only do they they have Reeves Bees Country Store um, on Facebook. I, I hope I even said that right. Reeves, bees, country store, and more. I think that's what it is. Okay. Um, so obviously they're beekeepers, but not only, I mean, they have their fresh local honey from their own bees. Um, the wax that they get from the hives, they Jessica uses to make like salves and uh, body butters and lotions okay. and um, all that good stuff. But also on top of that, she also does uh quilt of valor um so okay. yes amazing absolutely yeah. amazing and she does bereavement gowns um for service members who have lost their child and so she makes them gowns and they're they're just i don't even know because don't get me crying <laughs> okay no they're crying, like, no crying yeah, in baseball keep crying. no but they are like the the they struggle like everybody else. They yeah. do. Um, yeah. their, their store, they're, they're trying to help veterans as well. It's not just them making money. You know, it's, they're good people. They're great church one people. They're always there for everybody. Um, but they're there to give back, you know, okay. and supporting them. And, and a lot of us in IW, we buy stuff from them. I've helped make some of it. It's kind of cool. It's very time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty yes. awesome. But, um, it's great. I mean, they're, they're, it's just an all around great company. And right now they're in a contest um, that Marine Federal Bank here has put on. It's kind of like an Onslow County shark tank. Um, so oh, they, had, okay. they had, just had to present everything and do a whole presentation. And so, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, so hopefully they win that. If they win, it's $7,500 towards our business. So that's awesome. Which is a lot. Yeah. For them, you know? yeah. Um, so it's gonna be great. So there's nothing but great things. Um, between life, everybody struggles. Uh, write stuff down, clear your head, go for a drive, and everything from that to IW to my kids, just life in general. I mean, it's just freaking great. Good, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I love it. Yes, love it. Well, I've loved this. I've had a blast. Absolutely. I know I talk a lot. I'm sorry. And I no, talk a lot with my hands and with the pineapple, you know. Which makes my job easy because I can just let you – know, sort of like wind you up and let you go. And I can just <laughs> en enjoy like everybody out there. I know my boyfriend already – he knows when something's not right because I don't talk. <laughs> you know, uh, like, oh. I always talk. I'm like, no, I don't. No, I don't. But you do. But it, and that's okay. That – I mean, it makes you like a <laughs> wonderful guest on a on a podcast or a radio show or something like that. Because oh uh, lord, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Oh, thank I, you for I having me. Yeah, yeah, I thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Stephanie Brunner. Thank you. Uh, plugging uh, the irreverent warriors and uh, 
Reeves Beeves Country Stores, and I'll put links down here for for both of those. And awesome. Stephanie, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and, uh, and and being a guest and sharing your your stories with us. And um, folks, uh, you see the scroll down there for the veteran business owners uh, Av Boa. Uh, it's a, uh, a growing network of veteran owned businesses. You get to get a digital badge that you can use to help uh, show off the fact that you are a, uh, a veteran owned business in the same fashion as our old unit patches that we had that we are also proud of. So uh, check them out at boa.net and uh, Stephanie, uh, thank you again so much for coming on the show uh, folks. Thank you. Uh, be well, be safe, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>